All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Honestly Bilal. I'm your host, fourth year medical student Bilal Ahmed at the University of Toledo. And this is Honestly Bilal, the show where I talk to aspiring ophthalmologists such as my guest today, who is a medical student, Megana Kalavar is here. She's a fourth year medical student at the University of Miami, and she's here to share with us her journey and what drew her to ophthalmology. So looking forward to chatting and, and uh, finding out her story. So welcome. So kind of tell us, everybody who's in the audience, you know, where, where'd you grow up? Where are you from? And, and uh, where, where'd you go to undergrad? Yeah, for sure. So I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon, so cross country. Wow. Um, for undergrad, I went to Baltimore um, at Hopkins, was there for four years, and then I ended up taking a gap year, working in San Francisco for a year, and then coming to Miami. So you just were kind of indifferent about which coast to pick. So you've been West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast for a little bit now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wanted but to see as many cities as I could, so... I'm really jealous. As somebody who's from Kentucky and, and been in Ohio, I have just been stuck in the center. So uh, I, I think it's pretty <laughs> sweet that you're always somewhere with the coast by nearby. It's true. I love the water. There you go. So uh, kind of tell everybody, so um, tell us your journey into medicine. Yeah, that's actually kind of a funny story. So I went into Hopkins thinking I was going to be a neuroscience major, like classic, you know, uh-huh. um, pre-med. And as I went through my time at Hopkins, I started doing more public health work and really liked it. I felt like as a student, I was able to do a lot more, I thought, with public health and make more of an impact with public health. So I actually ended up graduating in three years um, from like with a public health degree at Hopkins. And then for the last year, did my master's at the Bloomberg School of Public Health, still at Hopkins. And so I like loved it. I loved just everything about like it just fit, you know, like. Right. Um, and, uh, so yeah, so I'd switched majors. Um, I, by that time, by the time I'd switched majors, I'd luckily done most of my pre-med classes. Um, so yeah, I was public health. And then weirdly, I ended up, um, taking on this like consulting internship Mm -hmm. where I was working for this consulting company in Canada. It was like for a few months and I ended up going to, and so we kind of worked longitudinally on this project where we would um, work on developing this palliative care program for this government hospital in India. Okay. And so there was a lot of remote work for that. And then I ended up being able to actually go to India on a scholarship to like give the recommendations for this, um, for the state health commissioner. Okay. And crazy, so I don't know, um, I don't know where you're from originally, but, well, uh, sorry, go ahead my parents are from Pakistan so I know it's like to be in that part of the world yeah 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 so like so this government hospital like had very low resources and though I thought I was going there to like present this proposal to the state health commissioner like a lot of it was really working like in the hospital like with the actual palliative care patients and just working with them I think really made me realize like even though like making this like broad level impact was awesome like I really like really miss like the talking to patients and like the one-on-one impact kind of thing and so like that's kind of what brought me back to medicine um so during that year like while i was applying i did a healthcare consulting internship in san francisco i mean like a job Uh in san francisco um where i was basically working um our clients would be hospitals so we'd be like trying to basically figure out like insurance contracts to see like how we can save the hospitals the most money and then i came to medical school and i haven't looked back since yeah, no kidding. But you definitely did a lot of other stuff, which I think is really cool to kind of diversify yourself. And it sounds like you really looked at things from like a, like a, from the public level. So from like a, you know, from the hospital system level. And I think that I, I wish I had that kind of experience. I think it's really cool that you've had that because I think that's really important as we go forward to kind of get that perspective from how things operate on a day to day from, you know, these hospital systems and how societies, you know, operate in different parts of the world with, you know, different health disparities and stuff. And and it's just, it's really cool. So I think that's a really unique experience to have. And it looks like you definitely, you know, you, you grew on your own first before you came into medicine. And I think that's, uh, I, I'm always jealous of people who, who took in, who took time to do that. Cause I think it's actually a really valuable experience. Yeah. And I think just in general, even, I think the business side of medicine is something that we get so little exposure to in general, you know, like how reimbursement works and how different like ICD-10 codes are, you know, decided upon. So like, it was really awesome. And I think that uh, through med ed, we should definitely, you know, try to put more focus into that. So moving from there, you know, so you, you find ophthalmology, you're interested in ophthalmology, you're, 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 you're pursuing ophthalmology for uh, residency this fall. So talk to us about how you found uh, the specialty itself and, 
and what drew you to it. Tell us about that experience. Um, so that has been a process for sure. So I came into med school, like really loved it, really loved just like going through it. And going into the third year, I kind of kept a really open mind. Um, when I first came into med school, I actually did work on an ophthalmology project, but that was more from a public health point of view. So really looking to see, I was really excited about this idea of like universal screening kind of from my public health background. So I started looking into um, how AI can be used for diabetic retinopathy screening because like the IDX DR was had just come out like my freshman year, which oh, okay. is um, it's a AI, it was like the first AI screening tool in healthcare to be approved. Right. And so I got like super excited about that. And so I had had some exposure to ophthalmology like through that. But at that point, I had no idea that that's what I wanted to go into. Mm -hmm. um, and then as I started doing my third year rotations, I loved, loved talking to pa patients. But I also like was shockingly like really loved surgery. Okay. And I was like, um, and so then I was kind of like, okay, like what can I do that kind of allows me to do both surgery and um, talk to patients. So like that was a whole thing. And then, um, so I started kind of looking at different specialties that had this mix between, you know, really talking to patients and surgery. And I think with ophthalmology specifically, I really liked like, um, like the immediate impact you could have, right? So like a patient could literally go from not being able to see really to being able to see in such a short period of time. And I loved that. I felt like you know, I felt like I was really able to make that impact, like really yeah. quickly. Um, and that is so like that was kind of going on. And then actually with Dr. Schreeder, I was in the OR with him. And of course, he's such a great mentor, like such a great teacher. And I just remember the first time I like looked inside the eye, you know, and it sounds so cheesy now to think about it. But it really felt like there was this whole world like, you know, behind there. And it just like the idea of being able to like explore that, you know, even though like everyone sees the eye, like the idea that there's this whole other world behind it was like really, really exciting to me. And so it kind of just happened. <laughs> yeah, no, that's how life goes sometimes. You just go from one idea to another and you never realize how your the things that you are just innately interested can just lead to a path. And I totally understand you. I, I think that's one thing um, this show has become Dr. Schreeder's <laughs> A Dr. Schreeder endorsement. I just want to make it clear. He never has asked me to ever talk about him, but we just uh, <laughs> happen to connect with a lot of people who, who he happens to mentor as well. And he's a mentor for me. Um, so he's actually the one who connected me and Megan and I, I uh, a little while ago. And, and I was happy to have her as a guest today and she, she agreed to come on. So it's been, so thank you, Dr. Schreeder. Um, I promise he's not paying me everybody who's listening. He's just, uh, <laughs> he's just a good person and, 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 uh, and a role model for a lot of us. So Megan, tell yeah, us a little sure. bit about, speaking of Dr. Schreeder and, and your mentorship under him, you've actually just, uh, you actually just got published in the current opinion ophthalmology on a project that you both did together. So talk about that and, and enlighten us on what that was about. Yeah, for sure. So that was an exciting project that we actually started a couple weeks into this whole, um, once quarantine had started for COVID-19. Um, just really talking about, like, all of a sudden we saw this influx of telemedicine and there was a lot of articles talking about how telemedicine can be implemented. You know, like very quickly we had to implement a ton of telemedicine across healthcare. And so we decided to look at it specifically in ophthalmology and really focus on why telemedicine hasn't taken off until now. Like the technology has kind of been there for a little bit. And now that, you know, we have this pressure to use tele-ophthalmology with the situation that's going on, what challenges and what benefits we can get. And I think it's very um, interesting for ophthalmology generally, because we think of it as such a hands-on, um, clinical encounter, right? Like the slit lamp exam is everything and you obviously can't do that, the computer. And so really trying to understand what the limits of it are. Like what are the situations in which they, patients would definitely have to go in? Is there a way for patients to go in while the doctors are still remote? And like also because ophthalmology that has so much new technology coming in mm -hmm. and kind of the IDXDR, you know, the AI stuff that's going on, we really wanted to take a look to see how feasible is it and where tele-ophthalmology specifically is going in the future. That's awesome. It sounds like you kind of went with the tide of what was going on in the current day and, and you went with it and, and it turned out to, to bring some fruition to an academic journal. So it's huge. I think it's a highlight of uh, one of your accomplishments. I'm sure there, there's many others. So, uh, <laughs> so kind of tell us what you're working on these days. Are there any, any projects that you're interested in or that you're working on that you want to give a shout out to people who, are, who have worked on them with you or anything cool you've done? 
Yeah, for sure. So right now, I think the main research that we're working on is really looking at gender disparities between ophthalmologists. So really taking a closer look to see, you know, why um, like leadership positions have more males and females and like other things along those lines, especially considering that women are graduating at, you know, even higher rates than males these days. Um, and it kind of holds a soft spot in my heart because um, I've been kind of involved in setting up mentorship programs for like um, female pre-med students and women doctors. So I'm definitely very excited about it. And honestly, we have such a great team working on it. Shout out to Dr. Kabuto and Dr. Sridhar, of course. Um, they've, especially in the last few months, like have been so awesome about, you know, helping us with it. And like one question really leads to the next. So some really exciting things coming up that I'm excited to hopefully share uh, in the future. That's great. And, I, and as somebody who has uh, two sisters, I, I've learned a lot about um, gender disparities outside of medicine. My sisters are not in healthcare at all, but uh, I think that that's important work to do. And, and please keep enlightening us and, and uh, championing these kind of causes. I think they're important and that, that they, should, they should be uh, you know, as important as, as ever right now. So keep up the great work. We're looking forward to seeing what you do. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next publication on it, hopefully. Yeah, for sure. I really appreciate it. I completely agree. It's a very important cause. So fingers Great. crossed. Uh, really rooting for it. you. I think it's going to be cool stuff down the road. Thank you. Yeah, fingers crossed. We're excited about it. So, okay. So we talked about ophthalmology. You talked about your background. You talked about your consulting bit. talked about your public health stuff. I mean, you've done a lot. I mean, you've, and you've done it everywhere across the country, even internationally. So uh, I'm, I'm, I want to pick your brain about what you do for fun. How do you wind down from all this stuff? Because I'm sure there's times where you just got to let loose and do your own thing. What do, what do you do for fun? What do you do for when you hang out? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think like the biggest thing for me, like if I have any type of break, my first, um, my, the, my first go-to is traveling. I, I, especially like in med school, I feel like you really have to capitalize on, you know, the few times you do have off. Um, and I've been very lucky to be able to have done that um, in the past few years. And I just love it. I think it, uh, being able, I mean, even if it's like traveling alone or like traveling with people, I think the opportunity to kind of meet and really make amazing friendships abroad has really been awesome. Um, as far as here, uh, when we don't have the chance to travel, um, during quarantine, we did, I have, I've been a dancer all my life. And so... Cool. It's been um, awesome to kind of get back into that. Uh, I was back in Portland for a good amount of time. And so it was a lot of fun um, kind of learning new dance routines and things with my sister. And, uh, and then also cooking, like both of us love to cook. So we really took advantage to bake and cook all sorts of things. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So how many sisters do you have? Is it just you and another sister? Or you have any just other one. siblings? Just yeah. one, okay. Are you the younger one or the older one? I'm the older one, although everyone thinks I'm the younger one. Really? Okay, so all the responsibility is on your shoulders. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not, she's honestly like my twin. Like, we're very okay. close, so. I, I feel like at our house, it's like my older sister was like the test child. So, like, everything she did was like, the, <laughs> like everything. She, she broke down barriers for us. And, like, we had to do, we got to do so much more after her um, just because she was like the test child. So, that's pretty interesting. So, yeah, actually, yeah. I want to ask you, like, where was the last place you traveled? Like, I mean, you, 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 I know these days it's obviously hard, but where was the last place you went to that you really enjoyed? Or yeah, what was the place, most recent one? The most recent one was over winter break. So like just before um, the whole COVID thing really blew up, we went to Egypt, Ooh, Israel, wow. and Jordan. Wow. Yeah, so like that was an awesome trip. That was over winter break, so it was like two and a half weeks. Very cool. Um, yeah, so like that was awesome. So, so much good food. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was very interesting. It was very interesting to go to those countries kind of back to back and see the differences and the differences in opinion and you know mm. how people um view things so yeah it was it was yeah. an awesome trip did you see the pyramids you must have seen the pyramids i'm sure i did of course yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome wow it must be really cool is it like was it everything you imagined as a kid or was it different like how was it like seeing it in person that's that's an interesting question i mean it definitely the pyramids were awesome i mean they're just even better than they look in pictures of course they, huh. they're huge i think the the thing that really blew my mind was Petra in Jordan. Um, oh, yeah. Which I think, I guess like we just don't hear that much about, but it is a wonder of the world. And so like going there and seeing that, it was just like mind blowing that like that existed. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
But I, and the only thing I know about Petra, which is this, this speaks to how nerdy I am, is that I know that they filmed the last Star Wars movie there. And I know it's like a very deserty area. And there's like these walls with these like ancient, just like designs on them. It looks sweet. I mean, it actually looks gorgeous. I mean, all those places where you have to go and, and you have to check it out. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah. Tell us. Absolutely. They have this like huge desert. And so like there, they have these little like, um, you can basically like, camp under the stars overnight and uh -huh. they look like these glass bubbles and so you literally feel like you're in outer space it's it's wild that's insane so you basically did you were yeah. in star wars that's basically what you're bragging about now basically <laughs> yes i didn't i never had that chance so then also just my final question here i gotta know about the dancing stuff what do you dance to what do you what's your what's your what's your genre like how, how do you go about it so growing up i did barth mountain which is like a form of classic classical indian dance um and i was on a dance team in undergrad at uh, Hopkins as well. Nice. Um, but since then, we've done like a lot of bhangra, which I don't know. It's oh like yeah, a... come on, I, yeah, bhangra is the best. <laughs> of course. So we did actually like a lot, a lot of bhangra the last couple of months. Um, just Bollywood. Um, so like mainly like stuck to Indian dance, but that's fun. It's that's been fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody who's out there who may not know, bhangra is like a South Asian style of dancing, and then it's, uh, it's mostly us just like moving a lot of arms and shoulders, but it's good <laughs> yeah. stuff. <laughs> very high energy. <laughs> yeah, very high energy, very high energy wedding, wedding dancing. So that's really cool. So Megan, I, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Uh, thanks for coming on. I wish you all the best uh, this application season and you are a future guest as well, hopefully, if you're ever uh, wanting to come back and I'm, I'm looking forward to hosting you again as a resident, as a fellow, as an attending or whenever you like. So all the best on your journey and feel free to come back anytime. Thank you for sure. And honestly, amazing, amazing job with this podcast. It's been amazing talking to you and it's awesome to see, you know, everything that you've done. It's truly amazing. Thanks. I'm trying my best out here. And if you like, or, you know, you appreciate these videos, anybody who's out there listening, be sure to comment, subscribe, share with a friend, anybody who might benefit from these. If you're a medical student who's interested in ophthalmology, just try and document the journey that we've been on and try to share with you down the road. And this channel is always going to be meant for the medical student audience. And that's how I want to keep it. So trying to gain more interest in ophthalmology, then feel free to come back. And if you want to hear from some great people in the field, then, then uh, feel free to share or, or listen in next time. So we'll see you next time on the next one. And thanks for joining me.